Years from now, when the story of the passage of health care reform is told by the historians of tomorrow, it will be a tale of heroes and heroines who triumphed against great odds and powerful forces of opposition. And one of those at the center of that tale will be today's keynote speaker. As Kansas Insurance Commissioner, Kathleen Sebelius stood up against practices that violated the trust of policyholders. As governor, she stood up to radicals who were seeking to end women's right to make decisions about their own reproductive health. And as Secretary of Health and Human Services, she played a pivotal role in passing health care reform. She was there leading every step of the way in negotiation after negotiation, in phone call after phone call, in meeting after meeting, Secretary Sebelius's combination of common sense and no nonsense made an enormous difference time after time. And now those same qualities will be needed as we put this legislation into action. One person in the right place at the right time can indeed change history. Kathleen Sebelius is living proof of this. A famous architect once said, God is in the details. Others say, the devil is in the details. All I know is this, when it comes to health care reform, Kathleen Sebelius is in charge of the details, and we are all lucky that she is. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce the most influential Secretary of Health and Human Services in American history, Secretary Kathleen Sebelius. Well, thank you so much, Deborah, for that wonderful introduction. And I have to tell you that already this has been um, an enormously um, heartwarming lunch. I have friends from Kansas who are here. I have lots of talented and wonderful HHS uh, colleagues who are here. I have, I know, Hill staffers and members of Congress, people I have worked with, and I just want to tell you all I'm, I'm very grateful um, to see all of you, but more importantly, it's been wonderful to have uh, the opportunity to work with all of you on this amazing last year. Um, I want to begin by thanking the National Partnership for Women and Families uh, for giving me a lovely award, uh, but more importantly, for the work that has been done over the last 40 years. Um, it's been over four decades that the National Partnership for Women and Families has been a champion for equal rights and opportunities for women. And thanks in no small part to the effort of this organization, uh, those years have brought incredible progress. Uh, when the partnership was first formed in 1971, I was just entering the workforce. And so I've been able to track this very personally. Um, you know, at that time, there were huge areas of the workforce that were just considered off limits for women. Uh, and when women and men did work side by side, there were huge gaps in pay. I think back to 1986 when I was first elected to the Kansas legislature. Uh, and at that point, uh, the State House uh, in Kansas, but across the country, came with glass ceilings to go along with those Capitol domes. Uh, there, there weren't many women, and there certainly weren't many women leaders. And the men in charge were very careful to identify categories of women's issues. For example, it was okay for a woman to talk about child care, or run an education committee, but pretty much off limits to run the appropriations committee or the budget committee or deal with taxes. Those were men's work. And when I think about uh, today and my colleagues of today, and I think about how so many of those barriers have broken down, 
Um, my colleagues in the cabinet, in President Obama's cabinet, um, are diverse and many. Uh, the so-called women's issues today at the federal level include the State Department and International Affairs, Homeland Security, the labor market, the economy, and health care. And we have a man running the Education Department, just <laughs> for good measure. <clears throat> Now, I get reminded of that progress every day when I get into work. Our staff lead at HHS for implementing the Affordable Care Act, one of the most important pieces of legislation to pass in decades in this country, is a woman. Our top official in charge of planning and responding to public health emergencies and attacks is a woman. The acting administrator of the world's largest insurance company, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, is a woman. And altogether, our 11 agencies in our department, eight of them are led by women, from the Food and Drug Administration. Yes, that's an applause line. the Administration of Children and Families, and the Indian Health Services. And I'm now the fourth woman to lead the Department of Health and Human Services. And I tell you, it is a great place to be at this particular point in time. So I don't have to look too far to see the evidence of the gains that you've helped all women to make over the last few decades. But I also know that we certainly have a long way to go. Uh, the National Partnership has always understood that women's advancement was not just a matter of what happens in the workplace, that there were other critical factors that stabilized women and family lives, that added to opportunities for women. And it's why health care has always been one of the key areas of focus of this organization. The partnership played a hugely instrumental role in the passage of the Affordable Care Act. 